So there was a time I had nothing but when I found him I found everything so I thank God for grace that saved a wretch like me unworthy of mercy yet I'm free and saved Unworthy of royal blood that flows through my vein. If not for Calvary, where would I be today? I was blind now. I see. I thank God for her grace. Amazing grace, that grace, grace that is greater than all of my sins. If not for Calvary, where would I be? I'll be here today. But now I see I thank God for her grace Thank God for grace Glory to God Glory to God Glory to God This is a good place to stand and just Keep clapping for the one who brought you this far. Glory to God. Glory to God. Celebrate life. Celebrate hell. Celebrate his grace. None of works. Let any man should boast. By grace are you saved. By grace are you delivered. By grace are you here. Thank you, Father. Lift up those two hands as high as you can. Thank you, Lord, for justifying the unjustifiable. Forgive me the honor of standing on your very holy altar. For being with me despite me thank you for giving me this opportunity moment to answer the questions in the hearts of your children and to bring a change in somebody's life glorify your name and honor your word confirming it with signs and wonders following and i thank you because your children would not leave this place the way they came they'll go better than they came and i declare that their lives will never be the same again and everybody say big amen i clap those hands shout you may be seated. God bless you. God bless you, Mama. Dr. to Adam for putting all these things together and having me. Romans 8, 37 is our trigger scripture. Yesterday, Mama preached on the conqueror's identity. Tonight, I preach on the conqueror's inheritance Romans 8 37 nay in all these things we oh I wish I could preach a little bit but the kind of topic that mom has given is a type you have to teach in all these things 
Oui. Watomu. Ba kowa ba wana namune. That is Greek and Hebrew, but I interpret it later. In all these things, we touch your neighbor, say we. In all these things, all these challenges, all these things that make us cry, discouraged, and depressed. In all these things, we. When Mama was speaking yesterday, she. Her emphasis was on the word after we, the word are. We are more than conquerors. We're not about to be. That's who we are. We may not look like it, but we've got to believe his word and accept God for his word. If he says we are, we've got to believe we are. So when things become real tough, don't say I'm finished. That's not what God said about you. Don't say I'm finished. Don't say I've had enough. Say I am. Because God said we are. More than the conqueror. Which means eventually I may go through hell and high water. But at the end of the story, I will turn out more than a victor. Can you say amen to that? I want to put a little more emphasis on the word we tonight because I believe that word may not be arguably the most important word in that scripture because there are many important ones but I believe the word we is the most foundational word in that scripture if you don't get the we right you will never get the rest of God's message and revelation we you've got to ask yourself who are the we First of all, by saying we are, we, we are more than conquerors, Paul is saying, I'm talking to a particular group of people for which I belong, for which I'm a part of. He's also saying, not everyone is a part of this thing. In other words, the privilege, the right, the audacity to conquer all of these things no matter how they come where they come is an exclusive privilege of a group of special people which he called we you see if you don't know who those we are then you would end up excluding yourself the other thing i want to bring to your notice is that when i first read read that he said in all these things we are more than conquerors i asked myself two questions number one what are all these things? Number two, who are we? On, on Sunday, I'm going to answer the question a little bit, what all these things are, because you've got to know. You can't miss the fact that when the man of God was talking and saying, we are more than conquerors, first of all, he expected those he were talking to to know who he's talking about. If I got into this hall and hear mama say, so we're all going to go, well, not, not all, we, we will be going to the government house tomorrow. I'm going to turn to someone who has been here earlier and I'll say, who are those going? Definitely not all of us. So who is going? Now, the only reason why <coughs> Paul could do a thing like that, communicate without clarity, is because Paul and Jesus and everybody who wrote the Holy Scriptures, they did not speak in chapters and verses. So if you ever want to understand what God is saying in the book, when you find a powerful scripture like the one we have, you've got to back up and find out what he was saying to get him. Nobody starts a statement by, No! Nay, in all these things, we are more like, nay, for what? He must be saying something before now. When he says, we are more than conquerors, it's because there has been an ongoing discussion. So mama was talking to, to zonal leaders, 
So he says, journalists are this, journalists are this, journalists did that, journalists, and then so we will be going to the government house. Then everybody knows who we is because we've been talking about the journalists. So if you want to know who Paul was talking about, you've got to back up. And I wish I had time to back up enough and tell you the things that he said before this but i give you that assignment but if you go backwards you meet verse 28 for example all things work together for good to them who do what to those who love god and are called according to his purpose so the we he's talking about is meant for those who love god and know their life is not an accident it's got a purpose. How many of you say, that's me? That's me. How many of you say, I love God? And my life has a purpose. You're not on the planet for the sake of it. You didn't get born again just to be here and smile and say, I got born again. I got a cross on my neck and, you know, got a sticker in my car. You know that your life is meant to count. If you love God and you know your life is a life of purpose, you are men and women of purpose. It's you that he's talking about. And when you back up a little more, say verse 29, you hear Paul saying, the people I'm talking about are those who God did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be firstborn among many brethren. So we who are born again are the people who God had predestinated that we should conform to what? The image of his dear son. So that he might become firstborn among many brethren. In other words, the more than conqueror promise is a family promise. It's a family matter. It belongs to the family for which Jesus is firstborn. And if the firstborn is a conqueror, then the rest of us cannot be losers. Not maritally, not financially, not spiritually. The reason why it was important to lay foundation yesterday about your identity is because your identity gives you right to your inheritance. The reason why you are being taught about your identity because if you don't know who you are, you wouldn't know what you deserve. You wouldn't know what is yours. Your identity gives you access to inheritance. So when you know who you are, the next question to ask, what's there for me? They say you've just been made the commissioner for stuff. But what does that mean? What's my portfolio? What's my pay packet? What are my rights? Do I, do I get an official card? Do I get you can't go and say give me an official card because I want they will say who are you? There are many things some of you are asking for today, not even evil spirits, even angels I say, Who are you? Not to talk of people who look at you up and down and say, Who is this one? Like Archbishop Bessie Downs used to say, A time is coming when those who used to say, Who are you? will look at you and say, How are you, man? If your amen is louder, then you are the one I'm talking about. I need to know my identity so that I know my privileges. I know my rights. I know my inheritance. Think about this picture. A man dies and he leaves a will. And now all the children and family, the will is being read. And he has portion stuff to his daughters then he now said for all my sons all of those how many million whatever should be shared among them equally while they are still talking there's a knock on the door they open the door here comes an old woman with a son in diaspora and they say yes this is the man's uh, son also you people may not know him but I was a uh, Tell a story. First of all, the reaction is anger. Because the man has died now. You put in your money, you, there's money. You want to come and become a son. You are not a son. Better get out of here. At the end, all everyone is going to ask for, prove your paternity. 
Go get a DNA test or something. You know, as soon as we know that you are really the man's son, then we know you are included. In other words, the purpose for knowing your identity is so that you can claim your inheritance. So when you solve the identity crisis, then you have the courage to claim your right. When you begin to think of yourself as a second class citizen in the house of God, every time you have a problem, please pray for me. Yeah? Please pray for me. Nothing wrong with soliciting for prayer. But one way you will know you have no confidence as a child of God, as a daughter of the king, is if you never pray your own prayer. You always subcontract every prayer you have to somebody else. I beg, help me pray. I beg, help me pray. The people who do that are either those who don't belong to that house or those who belong but they've done wrong. And they have no confidence that their father will forgive their wrong and even if he's angry with their wrong that doesn't change who they are a prodigal son is still a son he can stay out there and eat with pigs till he dies but the day he gets the courage to say look it doesn't matter how bad i've done i'm a son stubborn but i'm a son <laughs> been living in sin lately but i'm a son I've, 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 I've gone out of where I should be but I'm a son and even the hired servants in my father's house have bread enough to spare not bread enough to eat Christy, bread enough to spare I don't understand Mrs. B how can there be hired servants in that man's house when they have bread enough to spare if you want to use today's language, you say they have money enough to spray. To spread. So, they are paying them money that makes them richer than what they need. Yet, they don't want to go have their own ministry. <laughs> they have everything to be in their own house, but they still want to work for this man. His love, his care is so powerful that they become men of their own substance, helping other people. Yet, they are willing to be back home from diaspora. Somebody help me. I'm preaching really good tonight. <laughs> he said, hired servants. In other words, no matter how stubborn a son is, he cannot be lower than a hired servant. A son who has taken his father's his inheritance from his father's house. You know what that means? It means he, he has wished his father dead. Because the word inheritance don't come up until a man is dead. That's when you get inheritance. You may get pocket money from dad. You may get a raise from dad. But only when dad is dead you can talk as inheritance so when this man walked to his father and said i want my own inheritance he's saying daddy i don't like what you are doing when you are sick i said that's it with his age the man don't die without. then i cannot have my own inheritance only for you to get well what kind of wickedness is this you can't talk much you can't move much but to die so that we can take what is ours and enjoy you refuse so let me just tell you you are dead in my eyes i'm not going to wait till they mention you dead our funeral <coughs> burial ceremony so burial cloth the one will come lawyer say that house this house was his it's for you the family members no you are dead give my inheritance now so now he wants to come back home How? Whose inheritance is he going to come and possess after he has finished his own? But he came back because he had a revelation of who his father is and who a son of the father is. He said, even the hired servants of my dad have 
bread enough to spare i will go back to him and tell him i'm not worthy to be your son which means if the guy gives me what is being given to hired servants i, I don't break i don't hammer that will be enough for me it is his sonship right and i understand of it that brought him friends it is because you are what you are that's why you have what you have what do you have you have legal and divine right to conquer anything in all these things despite all these things this is a promise from heaven telling you that you are going to have many challenges and problems he said but i promise you you will end up the conqueror you've got to believe it it's so easy for us to believe men but we don't want to believe god <laughs> he said you don't know my husband you don't know what i'm going through you don't know what i'm going through in the office let every man be a liar but let god be the true one the question men and women is this whose report will you believe and don't tell me you can't believe until you see an experience we do that every day they announce your name on tv commissioner for this special advisor for this your friends start to call you congratulating you and you are celebrating how do you know that in the morning they won't change their mind <laughs> you believe what you had from your television suppose they made a mistake in the name You start a praise worship before you even reach there. Because we trust men. If your boss tells you, I'm going to give you a raise in the office from now, your son, from next month, blah, blah, you go and start to spend the money. I better give me that shoe. Don't worry. I do it when I collect my salary. <laughs> Why didn't you wait until you see the money very well and count it? Because we trust men. Like I always say, you can come to a church like this and then you sit down on your chair without even checking it. First, you don't check whether it's dirty or clean. You trust the ushers. Secondly, that chair may be bad. They don't even know. Why don't you come to church and sit with one of the bomb bomb and be very sure it can carry your weight. And then you try the other one. Put your leg in case. You just come to that bam. Why can't we just sit down depend on our God in that way? One of my best examples of natural faith is the day I got into an aeroplane. And when I sat down, the Lord asked me, who is the pilot of this plane? You know, there are simple events that bring extraordinary results in your life. Who is the pilot of this plane? <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm supposed to know the pilot. He says, you're putting your life in somebody's hands. And it's about to take you up in the air. How many miles? And you don't even know who he is. You don't know his qualification. Why don't you find the pilot and smell his breath? In case the guy is drunk. Or psychologically unstable that day because of the fight he had with his wife. So just imagine you enter into a plane, they cut your ticket, you sit down, you don't say, excuse me, uh, where's the pilot? They say, he said, he said, wait, please, please, madam, go back to your sister. I'm not going back, I want to see the pilot. Madam, go back to your, go back for I must see the pilot. It's my right. He's going to carry me up. I need to know. So the pilot comes up. Madam, what is the problem? Uh, where did you train? <laughs> ah, I see. What was your grade? How long have you been going up the plane and coming down? Have you almost had an accident before? Uh, anyway, do you have any certificates to prove to me that because it's Nigeria. <laughs> the, the, is there any pilot of repute that knows you? I won't guarantee because I can't tell this place, you go and kill me. After all, many times, planes in Nigeria and all over the world have gone up and never came down. Or maybe came down, but not the way <laughs> they should come down. So you sit down, you pick up the phone. Eh, uh, honey, hope you send the driver. I will get there. I should be there by 11. Who told you that? faith not in god or your rosary but in the 
pilot in the airline. If we can trust men this much, why can't we trust God? He said, say to the righteous, it is well. You don't have to wait until you see evidence of change. Nobody's life and charity has ever changed through crying, through complaining, through worrying. Time has come for you, lady, to stand strong and say, I am not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I feel. I am moved by the word of God. His job when he was in big trouble, he said, when a man dies, shall he live again? He said, all the days of my appointed time will I wait. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know that my chain will come. This is about you. Your change is coming. I said your change is coming. I said that change is coming. Lift up your hand and receive it by faith. Your change is coming. God will not allow you to be tempted above your strength. He didn't say in some of these things, some of the simple things. In all, he said, Bishop, you are talking about my entire problem. My own is not my entire problem. If you know how deep my own is. There's no mountain that he cannot move. No demon he cannot cast. No tears he can't wipe away. If God can do it, nobody can. So stop feeling sorry for yourself. Turn around and call upon the name of the world in a time of trouble because he is a prayer answering God. He is a problem solver. He said, in all these things put it all inside those things he said i promise you you are more than a conqueror tomorrow night i'm going to tell you more mama began to tell you yesterday i'm going to tell you more what he meant by more than conqueror i'm going to tell you i want to study the original language to find out what the people had in that day when he told them you are more not just conquerors you are more than conquerors. i'm going to, I'm going to share that with, with it's just so powerful tomorrow night but friends i'm here to tell you it is solvable come on face this river i'm not preaching anything so special this is no great revelation look into your life how many times have you passed some roads which look impossible and it got solved come on darling i'm not preaching something mega i'm just reminding you what you already know Was bigger than you no one can face lion with his hand but you prevail by the help of god so when the bear comes you don't look at the size between the lion and the bear you just say, this one is also bigger than me but i have a god who is bigger than it all and you call upon your god so when a giant comes, you forget about his size and you say all my life I've been achieving things bigger than me because I have a God on my side. So the God who saw me through the lion and the bear, he will also give me this uncircumcised Philistine. That's why one of my favorite songs is that song they say, He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. Here, here, and he is able. He said, more than able. Because he can handle anything. If it comes my way, he's able. He's more than able to do much more than I can do. Just hold this. I'm going to control myself. Listen to me. Ah, if it comes my way, he will handle it. <laughs> what has come your way lately? What has come your way lately? Is it marital? Is it financial? Is it your health? I challenge you tonight to cast your care upon your God so he cares for you. We are related to 
the boss the ultimate boss you can't be a son of the president and be begging for 20,000 naira contract something is wrong with you come on i said something is wrong with you when you got god on your side unbelievers said you are a majority if god be for you no one can be against you he said i am the lord i change it not therefore you sons of jacob in other words you can be what you can be because of who i am because i'm the lord the captain the master the controller the doer the miracle working god therefore you sons of jacob cannot be consumed what am i talking about today i'm talking about your inheritance friends the ability to enter trouble and see it get solved and change test to testimonies is your divine right whatever comes your way comes to pass when mama tells the testimony how she almost died how god healed her awesome people are inspired how many wonderful stories do you have where you almost died when there was an accident you know why these things happen because god put you here for a purpose your life is never meant to be lived for you because others have to get inspired by you god has to take you through certain roads so that you have a story to tell listen to me what is going on now will enter your book in the future oh i need some shouting i need some shouting in the head i need some shouting in the head friends conquering is in your blood if you don't believe me take a spiritual paternity test the bible says we are partakers of his divine nature and i've never seen anywhere where is god's nature to give up so when you look into your life and you see certain things you want to tell yourself mm -mm -mm, not in his nature i'm not partaking in this one you see there is no sickle cell in our family because i know the blood group of my parents they can't be they can't be sickle cell in our family because i know the blood group and when you mix it together sickle cell can come so there's no sickle cell in your life no failure in your life no poverty in your life because you know your heavenly father's blood group you want to know what god's blood group is blood group z z what does it mean so the nature of god if every man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and all things have become new. And all things are of God who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are not the ones looking for help. We are the ones helping others to contact God, to be reconciled to Him, to reach out to God so that they can be delivered. All things are passed away and the next verse says and all things are of God the Igbos like to check the family they want to marry from to make sure the traits that are there because in our family we don't have madness get up and say to Tupu in our family there is no failure <laughs> In this family called the family of God, there's no barrenness. None shall be barren in the land. No poverty. The cattle of a thousand here belong to God. If my God shall supply all my needs according to riches in glory. Look at your neighbor say, in our family. You know the rather than you saying i know myself you know is that my anger problem check is that part of his nature uncontrollable anger the type that make you break your tv which you want to watch because anger caught you that one is not anger is 
anger, anger, anger demonos. Which means demonic presence of anger. You need deliverance. When you vex, even you start to have headache. My father used to have so much anger. When my father is angry, he has a cane that he beats his kids. He just said, upstairs! Which means go wait for me to come and flog you. When my dad said, upstairs! The dogs know what is coming. All our dogs start going, ooh, ow, ooh, 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 ooh. They start crying because very soon, someone's going to get it. <laughs> You are the type that if it's raining and you get angry, the place is dry. It's not in our family. Bitterness, malice, unforgiveness, it's not in our family. That's not part of the nature he gave us. The Bible tells us what the fruit of the spirit is and I don't see hatred or anger or malice. I don't see anywhere I say, I don't like her. In all these things, it's not about problems, it's about character problems too. In all these provocations, we are more than conquerors. We have a right from God to conquer hearts, to conquer hate. It's our heritage as believers, it's our inheritance. We conquer challenges, no matter which one comes. For many are the affliction of the righteous. No, it is not, it wasn't said, but God is also saying, if indeed many are the afflictions of anybody waiting for this planet. It's not the righteous that have problem. Many are the afflictions of everybody. But the reason why he's talking about this is to explain the truth about the exclusive club. That exclusive club, I call them the SOG club. Son of God club. Not everybody belongs. As many as believed in him, he gave the power to become sons of God. We are the ones who, like everybody, have many afflictions and trouble, trouble. But the Lord delivers them from all of them. Friends, let me close by saying to you, we are not entitled to God's blessings because we deserve it. It's rather the opposite. We deserve God's blessings because we are entitled to it. It's our entitlement. Forgiveness is part of our entitlement. Patience is part of our entitlement. Self-control is part of our entitlement. Discipline with time. I said that slowly, deliberately. Is part of our entitlement. We talk about Nigerian time. You're not very much a Nigerian as much as you are a daughter and son of God. You need to reflect like father, like son like father like mother like daughter you've got to let the light shine in you that they may see god in you and glorify him you are a child of the living god in a world where there's so much hate malice jealousy where there's so much satanic attack from left right and center where there's so much demonic machinations coming through bloodlines and coming through causes, coming through things that were done generation behind. You must always remember what I've been trying to tell the church for a long time. Not all people are people. Some are peculiar people. That is why in Egypt there can be death going on. But a little part of Egypt called Goshen, they are having a different experience even with their childbirth. You are in that exclusive club. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. One of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He says, Bless the Lord, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In other words, forget the hearts. Forget the bills you have to pay. Forget the past. Forget the attitude of your family, the negative attitude. Forget your upbringing and your background and the things you experienced when you were a little girl. Forget it. You're not the only one who didn't have a father who loved you. And many people like you who have left that father talk, hook up with the Heavenly Father and become what they want to become. 
if you keep looking at the rear mirror you are going to have an accident you can't go forward so forget that you are raped that's that's the past you can't unrape yourself it has happened forget that you have a child out of wedlock there's no verse in the scripture that says you made a mistake yesterday it means you won't break through tomorrow let it go and let god take you from there to the future i truly believe that all things work together for good you may not understand but everything is working for our good that's why if you find joseph he will say help me thank my brothers if they didn't hate me they will sell me if they didn't sell me i won't get to mrs potiphar's house if i didn't get to potiphar's house i won't go through slander and lies from mrs potiphar and if she didn't lie against me i won't get to the prison if i don't get to the prison i won't meet the butler if i don't meet the butler i won't meet the king if i don't meet the king i won't be prime minister if i don't become prime minister i will feed israel in the time of famine if i don't feed israel in the time of famine jesus will not come through the prophecy of israel that god made for him i suffer to save the day somebody shout hallelujah help me tell two people one of these days you will thank god for what you are going through now you will thank him tell two people that forget forget those in church who borrow your money and refuse to pay you because they know if you lock, if they, if you lock them up the church will intervene yet they are insulting you for the money they didn't pay you can you imagine? Just because of ordinary 50,000. That's why she's disturbed my whole life. Ordinary 50,000. And the way you begged for it was on your knees. Please, please, I beg. You are my last bus stop. Please. Beg in like beggarly. Now, time to pay it. You are Forget those people. They will want to distract you from where you are going. Take your eyes off those tail bearers who are saying stuff about you forget forget it what you should never forget are his benefits because we don't serve god for nothing there are free benefits that god will have in god in your life can i have a moment somebody listen to me ladies listen to me gentlemen salvation is not for decoration jesus in your life is equal to jesus in the disciples boat when they are traveling that don't mean because you are inside jesus boat and he's inside your boat then we know you're going to your life is going to be stormless hello so don't think well, god why what have i done why is my own like this your own is like that because even if jesus is in that boat devil will say ah jesus did there let's not go there his ministry is to attack but he promised you one thing i would never leave not forsake him. I, I, I love that story. For many years, I used to put down the disciples because of their fear. Hey, don't you care if we perish? And how they were accusing God of not caring. And one day God showed me. He said, no matter what they didn't do, what they did saved them. They got a result at the end. They may not have had too much faith, but they had enough confidence to wake up Jesus and say, I beg you see the situation many of you have jesus in your life sleeping inactive doing nothing it's time to wake the god in you it's time to let go and let go i read the scripture even in the old testament he makes the promise jeremiah 1 19 and they shall fight against thee they shall fight against thee in your own church in your own family in your business they shall fight against it the evil was sometimes this is part of the promise but they shall not prevail against thee. why for i am with thee said the lord to deliver thee the reason why you're going to conquer is not because you're a great fighter not because you pray all night every night but because of his presence and the power of the one who is present in your life 
You don't have to fight alone. Bring God into the battle. Come on, friends. Put your God to work. Let me say again. Crying, complaining, worry will not change anything about you. Hating that sister cannot make your life better. Help me tell Cain that hating Abel will not improve your own life. God is not going to bless you and favor you more because you hated your brother. You're not going to get richer because you hate him. Forget about him. Forget about him. Put your mind over to God. Set your heart on God. First John chapter 5 verse 4 and 5. I'm going to talk more about this tomorrow. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatsoever is born of God. That's part of our inheritance. When you become born of God, overcoming comes with the territory. So to be born again is to be born to win. To be born of God is to be born to conquer, to overcome. Winning is your divine inheritance. You see, you don't have to work for money before the money is yours. If your father died, left plenty of money for you, you didn't work for it, but it's your money. Your inheritance is yours. Somebody gives you a check, you don't go to the bank crying, begging, and hoping they will pay you just because the money is not coming from your account. You say, please, sir, uh, Mr. Uh, what do they call you? Receptor, or what are they call, calling you, sir? Uh, please, uh, try and see how I can get this money. You know, come on, sweetheart. If your name is on that check, first, you will need to prove your identity. For you to get your inheritance. When you are sure you are who you say, if they want, they should extend that by calling and to confirm from the account holder or from the account owner. If they call Jesus and say, Is this one of you? I the one that wrote in the check for her healing, for her peace, for her deliverance, the answer will be yes. Amen. So let that cashier do whatever they want. Your inheritance is your money. It's just a matter of time. Please excuse. We need to check something. Finish checking. You must pay me that money. No matter what you do at the end, you must pay me my money. And I can stand there confidently because I know my name is on the check. I know that the one who gave me the check has enough money in his account. His name is Jesus. So that cashier must pay you friends god has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness and he said that we can be partakers of his divine nature and friends we always say as a cliche that there's no failure in god when there's no failure in god why should there be failures in your life anything i thought doesn't work the more you keep saying that the more you become stand and say no there's no failure in god i'm not a bastard i have his blood running through my veins i have his nature i will not fail in my marriage i will not fail in my ministry i asked our choir from the banawa church to help me sing this song as i pray for you there is no failure But there is no failure in my God. Yeah. He is ever ready to hear you when you call. For there is no failure in God. I know that there is no failure. Hold on, hold on, because there is no failure 
in my God. You just hold on, yeah. You just hold on, hold on. Because there is no failure in God. I swear to God, you say, there is no failure in God. The psalmist says, I'll look up to the hill. So where comes my help? Look up. You come, I know, but there is no failure in my God. All you gotta do is look up, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because there is no failure in God. There is no failure in God. There's a time for you. So you be strong when the temptations are on. Be strong, cause I know that there is no failure in our God. All you gotta do is be strong. Yeah, be strong, cause I know there is no failure. Just pray, yeah. You just pray because there is no failure in my God. Come on, love your mother, pray. Yeah, pray because there is no failure in God. I know that. Listen to me, friends. I don't know what things we can all put on our pretty dresses, look nice, and smile good. But it's one that sees the tears we cry in private. But I'll tell you something which you already know. I didn't come here to tell you anything new, to, tell you, to remind you of what you already know. In fact, some of these things you already know you preach it to other people how many of you women have experienced where somebody comes to tell you about their problem even the same problem you're having when you open your mouth to cancel them you are surprised how much you know it's like the encouragement you are giving is that, ah, <laughs> i wish somebody told me this all myself because you're loaded you just haven't used all the treasures you have for yourself Mama, the, the word of God says, Paul preached, speaking to the pastor, take heed to thyself and to the flock that God has made you overseer, feed the church of God. Three groupings. Number one, you. Number two, the people who God has made you overseer. If you're in charge of the women, that's who you're overseer of. And then for the rest of them, feed the church of God. Give them the word. But take special care of yourself. Don't be a great preacher who cheats yourself.
the word of God says that shall not muzzle the ox that treads the corn spend your life for other people but before you meet other people do yourself good take care of yourself be a great giver but remember to give yourself while you walk around the clock remember to sleep come a little while and rest don't give people pleasure in life when you enjoy nothing sometimes close your eyes my 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 wife is saying, this is my husband, you know how to enjoy when he wants to enjoy. I'll be going through there. I said, no, 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 no holiday, no birthday. We have so many things to do the money, many things in the church, many things some. One day I just went, I said, guys, we are going to this place to enjoy. She said, I thought you said you don't have money. I said, I still don't have. But after this one, I won't die. He who has begun a good work in me. All this time I said, I don't have. Didn't we eat food? <laughs> Didn't we give other people who had problems? time out give yourself a treat you're important and don't just read the bible to get another sermon to preach to others sometimes close your door play your own sermon preach to yourself sing your own song to yourself with your own name i declare tonight that no devil no doubt no fear will take away your inheritance from you. If your amen is louder, your miracle will come faster. Shout your thunderous amen! Listen! The cashier may delay, but they can't deny you. Because your name is in the promise. He said we! He didn't call anybody particularly. We! But he told us who the we are. And I am in that number. If you are going to call the road on that day, and you enter heaven, the Lord told me, said, I didn't, I don't write people's name in the book of life, only so that they will go to heaven. I write it so that every demon who reads it, know who they shouldn't touch. Any angel who reads it, know who they should protect and take care of. Do you have your name in the book? Are you sure your name is the book of life? Are you a child of the king? Are you a daughter of Zion? Yes, then go and sleep. Yes, God is a good father. Yes, he knows how to take care of his own. Yes, and let me say one more thing in prophecy, which I had in my spirit. God told me to tell you not to waste your precious time worrying. Yes, Mommy, you know we preach faith and we tell people to believe. But I've been in the church long enough to know there's something that supersedes faith. It's called mercy. It's called grace. How many times have you doubted? You still got it. If your life is moving forward, no matter how slow, even when you are doubting, what's going to happen when you believe? So God told me to tell you, and here's a word from the Lord for you. Thus said the Lord. Yesterday cannot stop tomorrow. If you got, got it, give God a big hand and celebrate. Just before I hand over for mom to round up. If you're here tonight and you say, Bishop, this was not just a sermon. I'm the one you were talking to. If you've got 2,000, 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, I want to take it, drop it in the altar, kneel down for one second and tell God, I'm returning here to testify on this issue because it's my inheritance is my right we're going to sing some praise and celebrate whatever he said for you to do do it you've got that five thousand don't wait for anybody just step forward put in the altar drop that ten thousand drop that two thousand drop that one thousand put your name in here right now you know how we do it come on let's sing something just drop it in for one minute Say something to your God. Respond to what He has said to you. Come on! Hey! Everybody stand and rejoice! We are, we are a chosen generation. Hey! Comfort to show His excellence. That's who we are! All I require for life, God has given All me. I for life. I know who I am. That's your inheritance. We are, we are the chosen generation. Comfort to show is excellent.
for just less. drop it in that altar and return to your soul. All I require for life, God is keeping me. Yeah. I know, say I know, I know who God says I am. I know what He says I have. I know where He says I'm at. Yeah. I know who I am. Yeah. I know who God says I am. If you need to talk to God, He says I have. Where He says I'm at. Put your name here. I'm walking in the power. I'm walking. Yeah. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. Listen, whatever he said for you to do, do it right now. God has spoken to us through his word. But he's also spoken through prophecy. What did he say to you in prophecy tonight? Yesterday cannot stop tomorrow. So no matter what has happened does not guarantee that the best is not going to happen. For you to have a testimony, that test will be turned to a testimony. Come on, let's rejoice. Whatever you have, put your name here. Put your 500. Put your 200. Put your love and receive the word. Everybody! Everybody say, oh! Yeah! Come on, church! Oh! 